guys, welcome back to Nicole's View. So I'm going to read you guys this article. Shout out to my girl, Erica. I saw that she had posted this on her Facebook page and I wanted to definitely dig into it. So this article here was written by a woman named Marina Hyde at The Guardian. And the minute I saw the title to this article, I said, there they go. There they go. This article should have squarely focused on Brian Singer. And I'm going to tell you why they're doing this, folks. They're throwing in R. Kelly. They're throwing in Michael Jackson because now they have to deal with bringing down Brian Singer. But they are not going to solely bring down Brian Singer unless they throw in a nigga or two. This is what this is. Now, this article should have 100% been about Brian Singer. How many times can you write articles or throw in uh, Michael Jackson's name? You've done it for over 25 years. Why did you need to have him in this, Marina Hyde? To me, this is your racism showing. You can't just talk about your own people. And this is why it's so important that those of us out here in social media, this is why I got behind the first them hashtag movement with Tariq Nasheed, because this is exactly what we're talking about. They're pissed off. Like my girl, Brittany said, they are pissed off because we're out here on social media saying, hey, you're not just going to jump over all these predators out here in Hollyweird and beyond, only to focus on the same cast of black characters. You're not going to do that. So this is her slick, sly way, okay, of thinking she's uh, taking down Brian Singer with this article. But what she's really doing still is lynching Michael Jackson. And the funny thing is, in this article, she doesn't, she has R. Kelly in the title, but she doesn't really talk about him in this article. But in this article, nearly four paragraphs is dedicated to Michael Jackson. But this is supposed to be about Brian Singer. This is that BS that we're talking about. This is where you have to learn and break it down to see what they are doing. Now here's the title. R. Kelly, Michael Jackson, and Brian Singer, who knew everyone? You see, you see what she did there? Um, beset by allegations of predatory and abusive behavior, including rape, the film director retains support in the film industry while he continues to bring in the money. That synopsis right there. This should have only been about Brian Singer. But like I said, sleight of hand, this is what they do. This is white supremacy staying on code, no matter what. Given the entertainment industry prefers simple messages, forcefully packaged, there is an inconvenient irony to the latest Michael Jackson documentary landing just as Brian Singer's Bohemian Rhapsody continues its grimly disingenuous awards run. Though Singer was removed as director near the end of the Bohemian Rhapsody shoot for set absences and not for the litany of abuse, assault, and rape allegations covering his entire career, the studio producing his film, Red Sonja, defiantly insists Singer remains attached to it. Okay, this could have been simply about Brian Singer. But here we go. 
Last week, The Atlantic published a lengthy investigation relying on more than 50 sources alleging the X-Men director's predatory and abusive behavior, including rape towards young men and underage boys. Many of the teenagers were vulnerable and without family support. The magazine builds a powerful case that friends, associates, and ultimately his industry aided and abetted Singer. Yet A.V. Lerner, whose Millennium Films is the studio producing Red Sonja this week, dismissed it as fake news. He added that the over 800 million Bohemian Rhapsody has grossed, making it the highest grossing drama in film history is a testament to Singer's remarkable vision and acumen. Well, Avi's hardly the first person to wonder, how can anyone be bad when he makes so much money? But he might be the first to say it out loud. And here we go with the attack. And so to Jackson, whose wing nut fans believe is currently riding the great Ferris wheel in the sky, while his detractors hope he's strapped to a flaming wheel in Tartarus instead. For those of us who idealize earthly justice, Alice, the Leaving Neverland documentary that premiered at the Sundance Festival last weekend, is likely to be just another piece in a jigsaw whose picture should have been clear decades ago to all but the willfully blind. There... Excuse me, just as there were with R. Kelly, unfortunately, there are whole kingdoms worth of the willfully blind. Forget the fact that they uh, mutilated, dissected, lynched, trashed, lied for over 25 plus years against Jackson the horrible media onslaughts, the racist agendas. Forget all that. That I guess that just didn't happen. Which in reality drove him to an early grave. Them lying on him. You have this bitch writing this and then saying folks who know the truth, those who research the truth, basically are dismissed as crazed fans who only care for Jackson because he can sing and dance. This is what this is. This is, I'm a white woman. I said it's true. And the rest of us are going to agree with. So America is going to believe the lives of two white males who testified under oath that this man didn't do a thing to them can turn around years later after this man's death and say, now back to this garbage article, she goes on to continue to say, the reality, of course, is that a huge number of people has specific knowledge of Jackson's behavior and ignored, ignored it ultimately because of money. Sophisticated is really a comforting euphemism for expensive. All of this is about money, who makes it and why that makes things go away. How much of it Jackson was worth to record company Sony, which has incurred precisely zero public censure. How much of it he could throw at lawyers to silence a parade of children. Do you hear this lying ass bitch? She is just saying children. She's not giving you any names, any documented proof that he did this, that he paid off a quote unquote parade of children. She is just writing this shit as she goes along. She goes on to lie. How much of it can 
be thrown at lawyers to silence a parade of children accusing him of the same things in identical patterns, how much of it he could pass to servants who were financially dependent on him in order uh, that they continue parties with young boys while they looked after his own children in some other wing of Neverland. This woman is just writing up shit as she goes, just writing, just writing, just writing. None of this is true. And it wasn't just young boys at Neverland. You see, this is why it's so important for you guys to support people like me and others out here on YouTube. It's important that you guys share these commentaries because what we're giving you is the raw organic truth. And we're showing you what they do in your racist mainstream media. This is a straight up hit piece on Michael Jackson. It has nothing to do with Brian Singer. Um, there were parents, there were chaperones, there were adults, there were children, his family. They all hung out in Neverland, not just boys. And she continues. Who knew? Now, this is supposed to be by Brian Singer, but we're still on Jackson. Who knew in 1993, Jackson and his team fought the accusations of abuse by preteen Jordan Chandler right up to the point that the child was able to describe distinctive splotches on Jackson's buttocks and penis. This woman is writing a bold face lie. This is a bold face lie. A grand jury didn't even indict Michael. This, this, this is a lie. Here we go. Here's the real truth behind that. I'm sure some of you have heard that as well. Here's the truth. Reading this once again from Vindicating Michael from WordPress. And they say, this was wrote in April of 2010. Americans seem to, to be grossly underestimating the importance of Jordan Chandler's big mistake. He described Michael as circumcised, while in reality, he was not. I know it's more than some, you want, some folks want to hear, but we have to get out the truth. You guys need to know this. He was not even circumcised. God, I, I know Michael B. is rolling in his grave knowing that folks have to talk like this about him. Can you imagine? Or anybody. Um, Americans seem to be grossly underestimating the importance of Jordan Chandler's big mistake. He described Michael as circumcised while in reality he was not. I rack my brains about why they don't understand this, the crucial importance of it until I came across a medical site which explained the, overwhel the overwhelming majority of American men were circumcised. So this Jordan Chandler... Okay, they say Jordan Chandler said this, and it's not true. And then she goes on to say, to finish the circumcision subject, let me ask you point blank. Um, oh, excuse me, not, not that part. I want to read this part. Um, and it goes on to say, how could Jordan Chandler learn of any splotches on Michael's body easily? On February 10th, 1993, Michael Jackson spoke to Oprah Winfrey and disclosed um, to 100 million people watching the show that he had an extensive case of vitiligo, which had started about the thriller time. After such a revelation, it was no problem to assume that Michael had blotches all over his body, including genitalia. So there you go. She's lying. And she goes on to say, who knew in 1993, Jackson and his team fought the accusations of abuse by the preteen Jordan Chandler, right up to the point that the child was able to describe distinctive splotches on Jackson's buttocks and penis, all lies, um, following legally mandated photo shoot of his genitalia area, Jackson suddenly U-turned and decided to settle for $23 million. All of this is a lie. 
As I just said earlier, he did not settle. His insurance company paid the Chandlers, not Michael. Not Michael. This is another hit piece. Um, I mean, this stuff is just, it's like she just went and found different pieces from tabloid, trashy articles straight out of hell and put it in this. Okay. A child cancer survivor, um, a child bedmate who book he described to my rubber rubber boy and on and on and on and on. So this is, this is just more regurgitated, um, filth, trash and lies. And then finally she goes back to Brian Singer. After all of that, she goes back to Brian Singer. As indeed, it is alleged to have gone on with Singer, who has long been tailed by sexual assault allegations. He denies all the Atlantic's revelations before he denied these. He had a couple of decades of denying other ones, the barest bones of which are as follows. Singer's, Singer excuse me, was sued in the 90s by the parents of several child extras who claimed they were filmed naked for a shower scene without permission. The cases were dropped for lack of evidence. The first rape accusation came in 2014 when a former child actor accused Singer of playing him with drugs, or excuse me, plying him with drugs and alcohol and raping him. He ended up withdrawing the case after his lawyers dropped him. By this stage, Singer would be fighting the claim by a 17 year old that had that he had uh, sexually assaulted him and attempted to rape him. This case was eventually dismissed at the re at the accuser's request. Isn't it funny? Stuff is just getting dismissed and, and, and dismissed and dropped. Isn't that funny? In late 2014, a documentary on called An Open Secret that we all know about, very important, premiered at a prestigious documentary festival featuring actors including Corey Feldman and Todd Bridges. It sought to uh, eliminate the culture of child sexual exploitation in Hollywood and contained numerous references to Singer. We got zero Hollywood offers to distribute the film, the producer remarked, not even one, literally Literally, excuse me, no offers for any price whatsoever. Interesting. But yet you see what's going on with Jackson right now. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, they can find folks to air that, but they can't find anyone to air an open secret. All connected, folks. This is white supremacy doing what? Staying on code. In 2016, the actor Noah Galvin told a publication uh, profiling him that Brian Singer likes to invite little boys over to his pool and diddle them in the fucking dark of night. He later apologized. My comments were false and unwarranted. It was irresponsible and stupid of me to make those allegations against Brian. And I deeply regret doing so in 2017. Brian was accused of raping a 17 year old boy in 2003. That case remains ongoing. When the allegations against Harvey Weinstein were pouring out and Me Too was snowballing, uh, West World star Evan Rachel Wood tweeted, let's not forget about Brian Singer either. That post was uh, deleted, yet to be erased. However, is another Wood tweeted from January this year, which inquires, so we just blank, we are all still supposed to be pretending we don't know about Brian Singer because it worked out really well with Spacey and Weinstein. If by this stage it feels like uh, there isn't enough money in the world to save Singer, Learner's um, invocation of the Bohemian Rhapsody box office uh, takings should remind you that there currently still is. Uh, ludicrously, Lerner has since claimed that he signed off on the statement by himself, but didn't write it or read it first. Okay. Not that he wants to retract it. He would have just put it differently by stressing his decision to retain singer uh, has received no industry criticism. Nobody called me from one agency. He, um, excuse me. He has since said, 
I got support by the head of a studio to say, well done, A.V., You stand by what you believe and people shouldn't be innocent until they are proven guilty. Nobody told me that they're not going to work with me. All right. Sweetly, various publications have in turn dismissed Lerner's reports of zero industry blowback as a claim. Can we stop calling it a claim? Let's take a look and believe him. They already knew about Singer. What could be more credible then the notion that the big players stayed out of it, either looked away or applauded it, and ultimately agreed with Lerner's overriding thesis. Brian Singer makes his, or excuse me, Brian Singer makes this town a lot of money, and who are we to doubt the moral weight of that? That's the end of the article. That is literally the end of the article. So a big, big chunk of this article was basically a... Uh, Lynching Michael Jackson. You guys have to understand the agenda they are pushing here. I know I may sound like a broken record, but it is so important that we call this out. I know this is a long commentary. You know, usually I don't make them super long like this, but this was so important to me. I said, no, I can't sit back and let this ride. Marina Hyde, you should take this article. Okay, take this article to your nearest bathroom. Okay. Wipe your butt with it and flush it down the toilet. Because I see what you're doing here. You couldn't write an entire article solely on Brian Singer. But what did you do? What did you do? You decided, you know what? I, I, I better throw in Jackson. I better throw I, I better throw that in and talk about him. Maybe my bo- the boss is nudging me. You, you better throw in Jackson too. It can't just be Singer. This is what she did. And you notice she didn't put talk about Kelly as much. She just wrote that one sentence and then had him in the title. But the rest was about Jackson. This is your racist propaganda media at work here. I see exactly what you're doing, Hyde. You're racist, you're despicable, You're disgusting, and I see through your games. Hashtag first them. You tried it. You really tried it with this. These devils never, never disappoint, do they? Never. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think. Oh, before I end this commentary, I meant to bring this up. Speaking of of Michael, um, I was on Facebook last night and someone had posted, had made a post about there is already a hashtag Michael Jackson getting started up. There are already radio DJs um, that's ready to get this going and they're going to do this after this trash documentary airs on HBO and Channel 4 in the UK in March. So you're going to see it ramped up. You're going to see this. I'm telling you ahead of the game. Be prepared. Because they're ratcheting it up. I mean, they're just ramping it up. They're ratcheting it up. They're ramping it up. They're getting ready. And I made a post about this on Facebook. And someone reported my post. And this is why... I am sick and tired of Facebook. It's not our platform. Fedbook is not our platform, but we use it anyway because that's what we've been using. But when you call these devils out, they want to shut you down. My post about that was shut down because I was seeing the posts from these mammies out here, these radical feminist mammies, who is going to go ahead and, and start this. It's going to start definitely after this trash mockumentary airs in March. So just be prepared because it's coming next. 
Shout out to our boy Harvey because he said they're going to do this. And I already see it. I already seen it. I already seen the post. They're already talking about muting him. How the fuck can you mute, mute a dead man? You, you cannot mute Michael. Sorry. You can try, but it ain't going to work. You radical, sick, twisted black women out here co-signing this shit. You're going to get it. Your karma is going to come. And when it comes, I cannot wait. Folks like this, Marina Hyde, all you devils, you will get yours in the end. And that's all I'm going to say. I'm, uh, this has gone long enough. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video.